Hey everyone, it's Kim, and welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. Welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. If you're new to my channel, I read everything about food. The short, the sweet, the long, I love food. I am here today with my November wrap up, and it's a short one, and I'm okay with that. As I've mentioned before, towards the end of the year, I find that my reading really slows down. I'm also super busy with holiday markets for my small business. So I have four books to bring to you this month, and only one of them is nonfiction. So let's start with the three fiction foodie books that I read. First, I read Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. I have had this on my shelves for years, and I actually listened to it as an audiobook while preparing for the holiday markets that I just mentioned. So I have a whole reading vlog about this that will be linked up below or down below will be linked up in the cards or down below um, and get my full details there. This was super sweet. I get why people really liked Emma Lord. I thought this was a really fun book and it was really fun to listen to as an audiobook as well. If you don't know what Tweet Cute is about, the best way I can describe it is Twitter Wars about grilled cheese recipes. Two totally different families. Um, boy, girl, Pepper Jack is their um, love trope name because we have female protagonist Pepper and Jack the male protagonist. Super cute, both about family owned businesses, just in different scales. They both go to the same school and are enemies to lovers. And there's some secrets in between as well. Next up, I have The Restaurant Critic's Wife. I did a whole video about books about restaurant critics. So you want to be a restaurant critic. And this was one of the three books that I reviewed. This is a novel um, and this is all about Lila Soto, whose husband, Sam, is now the restaurant critic in Philadelphia and how his need to be incognito really sort of isolates her as she moves to this new city and just has their and has just delivered their second child a son. So I think it's a I thought it was a really good book but I have all the details there in that video as well. So sorry I'm getting through these first couple short and sweet but I have full other videos up and down below for you to click on in as well. The third book I read in the month of November was for my October no, my November book club locally. And that is The Cookbook Club by Beth Harrison. Harbison, excuse me. So this is three different point of views, um, three different women, Margot, Asia, and Trista, and they all join this cookbook club. So you have three different points of view, all of these women going through different challenges in their own lives brought together by this cookbook club. I enjoy fiction like this. It's a light read. I did find that the storytelling is a little imbalanced between unbalanced, imbalanced. So I did find that the story is a little bit imbalanced between. I did find the story a little bit unbalanced between the three female protagonists. I could see a sequel. I think this is a book. It's a little bit older. And I think now when we have multiple character point of views, what we do end up seeing is a lot of not sequels in a series, but characters that then get their own books in the same universe. And this feels like a book that came before that trend became popular, if that makes sense. So you have three different characters crammed together in just shy of 300, just over 300 pages, 340 pages. And I found that each character I really liked, but wanted more detail and more depth from. Now I think we're in this era of writing and publishing where you're going to get each character maybe as an Easter egg in the first or the second book, and they intersect in sequels or additional books in the series. So that, I did like this book. I just think I wanted more from each character. And the final book I read in the month of November is the new Kosher Soul book by Michael Twitty. This came out in August of 2022 and was one of my most anticipated books of the year, so much so that I did get it signed by the author. I actually, I actually accidentally ordered two copies of this book, so the additional copy, which is not autographed, is in my Pango bookshop down below. If you don't know about Pango, it's this app marketplace where you can buy used books from other readers. Uh, I don't have an affiliate code or anything. I have just found that just like how I buy a lot of my books used from open books, I do go to Pango now too to find books off, not cheaper. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. I love to read and I love to collect books, but I don't always love paying full price. This book, for example, I paid full price for and then I accidentally paid full price for it twice. So the second book is down in the Pango bookshop. So Kosher Soul is Michael Twitty's second book. 
in this memoir food writing space. He does have cookbooks that came out as well, such as Rice. So Michael Twitty's book is The Faith and Food Journey of an African American Jew, and he is also the writer of The Cooking Gene. So this is a James Beard award-winning author, and this is his second memoir, and this book really focuses on the conflict or resolution of multiple identities. Twitty is gay, black, and Jewish, and this book takes us through how he reconciles, how these three identities come together and how it is different for everyone. Uh, different, there's interesting dynamics and conversations about different ways, even in the Jewish faith that people stereotype rank. There's different ways in the black community that you can be looked at differently or even treated differently for practicing the Jewish faith versus other faiths and for being gay. I found that Michael Twain narrates his own audiobooks, and I love listening to this man talk. I have seen him on Chef's Table. I've also seen him on High on the Hog, the Netflix series based off of the book by Dr. Jessica B. Harris. I really like Twitty. I think he's an eloquent writer. I think he's an eloquent speaker, beautiful orator, someone who has like a divine, almost divine skill at this kind of storytelling. So I did listen to this book and I really took my time with it and found that it was worthy of a slower pace, a slower cadence, so that you could really understand the multiple layers of what Twitty's analyzing, evaluating in his own life and how other people perceive him. He does in this book allude to the fact that he has a three book deal. So I do believe there is one more book coming that is a, in this memoir food writing-esque space. Now, I don't know what it's going to be about, but I really, really liked this book. I highly, highly recommend that you read it. And I have a full review also on this book that will be coming out on the channel as well. We're not yet halfway through the month of December, but because I know I'm going to be traveling for the holidays, I wanted to at least tell you the three books I'm reading so far or have finished, excuse me, in the month of December as well. First up, I just finished yesterday, Digging Up Love by Chandra Bloomberg. This is the first in a food lovers kind of series. I think her next book comes out next, this year in 2023. So next year, excuse me. Um, this is very slow burn, um, two different black characters, Alicia Blake, Quentin Harris. Quentin Harris is a paleontologist. And Alicia has been living with her grandparents the last couple of years in their small town in rural Illinois. And her grandfather has unearthed dinosaur bones in her backyard. So there's a lot of sparks, there's a lot of tension here, but each one has, comes with a lot of emotional baggage and a lot of trauma. I found this book very sweet. I loved celebrating black love and family relationships were super important in this book. I love that Quentin is an attentive and really present uncle in his niece's lives and that Alicia is trying to do everything she can to keep her family together. After her own parents, she's lost her mother and her father has aban abandoned her and her sister very young in their lives, how much family means to her. So I really, really liked this one too. And I'm very excited for the next book in this series or universe. I'm not quite sure if it's a, like a sequel or anything. Okay, next up, I read Careering. This is a 2022 publication. It came out, um, sorry, it's by Daisy Buchanan. It came out earlier this year in I think May. So Careering is all about Imogen. She's always dreamed of working in publishing, specifically in like magazines and online writing. She's always wanted to write for a magazine, but she's been this unpaid in this unpaid internships position for a very long time. And she writes and works for Harry. It's definitely two female leads, uh, alternating points of view, Imogen gets her big break to help Harry launch this new vertical within the parent company. And her first article about her first threesome when she was in college goes viral. And now Imogen is very pressured to continue to write about this sex space, when it's not necessarily what she's passionate about. And she feels pressured to continue to perform because Harry was passed over for a promotion at this larger publication within the company, but is given this vertical to launch. And Harry becomes very fixated on clicks, getting this to launch and having it be successful. So two different points of view in two different parts of their careers, different stages of their lives. I definitely understand both points of view in this as well. If you have ever worked in entertainment and in media, this is a very accurate articulation and depiction of what goes on in the space. Daisy Buchanan herself is a writer and has written for numerous publications and outlets. So it's very authentic. It is very real. I actually found it kind of tra traumatizing because it was I, early in my life, in my early 20s. And after I graduated from undergrad, I worked in film and entertainment for a couple of years and found that the pressure 
it, like it wasn't for me. I didn't feel respected in that field. A lot of other things happened and I went back to school to get my MBA and now I work in food. So I did find a lot of this like, I just, oof, there were times I just went oof and I had to tell Dan like, this is so real. This touch is very close to home. I think a lot of people can feel and relate to this as a recent college graduate. If you're just getting into your career or you're almost 30 and you're like, what am I doing with my life? I thought I had accomplished all these things at 30. Uh, very good book. Recommend it, but oh, man, for me, I'm so glad I don't work in that industry anymore. And the final book that I read this month, or the final book in this wrap up, at least, because we're again, we're halfway through December not even, is Chop Suey Nation by Anne Hui. And this is the surprising history and vibrant present of small town Chinese. So this is Chop Suey Nation, the surprising history and vibrant present of small town Chinese restaurants from Victoria, British Columbia to Fogo Island. I don't know what NL stands for in Canada. Nova, not Nova Scotia. I don't know what NL stands for. Oh, sorry. Um, Newfoundland? Newfoundland. I received this from the lovely Jill over at the Book Bully, and I will do a full review on this book. Um, well, I'll have a whole video about the two books that Jill sent me. I'm still working on the second one, and really, really enjoyed this. This is definitely going to make the top 10 list this year of nonfiction books. Chop Suey Nation is a wonderful book that came out a couple of years ago, and it's all about Anne Hui and her husband drive across Canada because she's fascinated by the idea that there are always these Chinese restaurants in small towns. And what does that mean? What is, what does that mean for the world? And like, what does it mean about the immigrant story and her own father who came from China, who ended up opening a Chinese restaurant. So I really, really liked this book. Let me just read the top paragraph for you because I don't think I'm doing it justice, but I just loved it a real lot. In 2016, Globe and Mail reporter Anna Hui drove across Canada to answer two questions. Why is there a Chinese restaurant in every small town? And who are the families who run them? It was only after the story was published that she discovered her own family could have been included. Her parents had run their own Chinese restaurant, the Legion Cafe, before she was born. This discovery set her on a time-sensitive mission to understand how her own family had somehow wound up in Canada. And I really, really loved this book. I love food and I love stories because I just love how food connects people together in this way when they might not have known each other otherwise. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. I'm so glad that Jill sent this to me. I also really like the cover. I don't know if it's just the way like Canadian books are published. It's not a book sleeve as much as it's like a foldable book cover, if that makes any sense. But I really love the way this book feels and I'm so glad I have it. I'm so glad to have it on my shelf. Hey, so I am back and decided I'm gonna combine my November and December wrap up because it's already mid-January and I still haven't posted this video for you. The next book that I finished in the month of December is Made From Scratch by Kent Taylor. So this is, I'm not quite sure what the definition between an autobiography and a memoir are. I think this is actually considered more of an autobiography. This is Kent Taylor's story about how he founded Texas Roadhouse. And honestly, I didn't really know a lot about Texas Roadhouse other than it was one of my mom's favorite restaurants to get a steak in growing up. And then when we moved to Buffalo, surprisingly enough, there's actually a Texas Roadhouse like 10 minutes from the house. And we went in like on a Tuesday night of all nights and uh, had like steak and a biscuit and like the fresh made biscuits. And it was just a lot of fun. And it was really nice to learn about that kind of chain that's kind of just been around for a while. Um, I give a lot of credit to Kent Taylor as a leader. He's not the most, I think, sophisticated leader, but has really strong instincts. But the work that he did during the pandemic, which you really read about probably in the last third of the book, the work he did in the pandemic to keep his employees paid and taken care of, I think was really commendable. And that section of the book alone is worth reading. I recommend to you. This is how leaders should operate during global crises. He took care of his own staff and his own people and donated his salary. You know, he's the CEO. He donated his salary to protect his people. And so did many members of his executive board. So really recommend the book. That's the logo if you've never seen um, a Texas Roadhouse sign before. Next up was actually a very quick read. And I read Nora Ephron's first book, Heartburn. I have seen this book around for so, so long, and I really love, loved the late Nora Ephron. I loved her movies, and I think of Julie and Julia. This is her first book, and it's all about 
Rachel and Rachel has discovered that her husband has cheated on her and is in love with someone else that she has just had a baby and Rachel writes recipes for a food column so also you can see on the cover the fork heartburn it was a very short little book um, it was a short little book of 177 pages but it was a delight and it's just I love the wit and the way this was written um, I highly recommend it if you were a fan of Nora Ephron's movies. It's a really quick little read, and I'm glad to have it on my shelves. I kind of bought it in a day and finished it the next, but I really, really liked it, and I'm really glad I have it. And the final book I read in December is Satisfaction Guaranteed, How Zingerman's Built a Corner Deli into a Global Food Community. So this is written, uh, this is not a memoir. This is really just the history of the restaurant, it is written by a reporter, and it's really, I love stories about delis and family-owned businesses and just like how these little shops just continue to thrive, and Zingerman's is a really cool example. This definitely reads more like a business book. You are going to learn about policies, how to have visions for your company, setting goals for your company, leadership roles, how to promote from within. This is definitely a business book, more than it is a history of the rest. You get the history of the deli, but you're definitely, the tone and the mood and what you're learning is really about the business and how the business is successful. You're going to get less direct insights from the founders, like they're not going to have too much. It's not a memoir. Um, I did really like it. I was a little bummed because I really liked, I was hoping for more from the direct owners. It's still a really great book and I'm probably not doing it justice, I just, business, bo business books about small businesses that become global sensations are great. It's great to learn from them. I am a small business owner, but there are times where I, I guess I was hoping for more interviews directly for, or direct talking points directly from the owners. And you do get excerpts. You do get quotes from the team throughout this. I just, this is much more... Each chapter has a different policy or a different way to look or learn from the business versus a memoir that has much more of a connective thread. It's not a bad book. It just wasn't what I was expecting. Still really liked it. Still will actually make a trip to Ann Arbor just to see this place one day. Okay, so that is everything I read in November and December to wrap up the end of 2022. Let me know in the comments below if you have read any of this, any of these books. Have you been to a Texas Roadhouse? Did you grow up around a Texas Roadhouse? Have you been to Zingerman's in Ann Arbor? I'm so jealous of you if you have. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I highly recommend you turn on the notification bell because I realize I am an infrequent poster on my YouTube channel right now. I'm really busy with my small business and my regular job, so I'm not sure how frequent I'll be posting here. I still want to. I still love talking about books with you guys but that bell notification might be the best way for you to find me. Otherwise, it's gonna get lost because the algorithm hates me because I don't post frequently. Anyway, I hope you're well. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.